Beloved, before we start the message, before I start the message, let us pray. Father God, we thank you that your word does not come to you void, but accomplishes its purpose. And as we come before you, Father God, we ask that you take absolute control of this message. Let it reach to the masses so that people will run to you, Father, through this message to save their souls. Father God, we thank you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we will pray with thanksgiving. Amen. The message today is entitled, Be Strong in Grace. Be Strong in Grace. And we, uh, 2 Timothy 1 to 7. 2 Timothy 1 to 7. In 2 Timothy 1 to 7, Paul is addressing Timothy, a son in the faith, to be strong in the grace that the Lord God Almighty has given him. Paul knew Thomas, uh, Timothy had already been walking in the shadow of his grandmother and mother and could, be tr and could be trusted with the assignment given to him. He encouraged him to stir up the gifts of God in him. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and discipline. Beloved, Paul was speaking to Timothy then, but the same message applies to us today, that God did not give us the spirit of timidity or fear, that we should have the courage to spread God's word, to evangelize. Amen. Beloved, Paul and Timothy have long gone to be with the Lord. We are left with the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ promised us before he was crucified. The Holy Spirit is here with us and encouraging us to exercise our gifts so as to be fruitful Christians. To be fruitful Christians, we must be strong in grace. There is a task that we must perform, such as entrust the gospel to faithful men who will teach others also. There is a price to pay though. We must suffer hardship. That is the price we have to pay. The three examples of those who suffer hardship for a greater goal are the soldier, the athlete, and the farmer. The good soldier is focused on pleasing the one who called him into service. This focus takes precedence over any other desire in the life of the soldier. For the believer, the one who calls us, our commander-in-chief, is none other than Jesus Christ. The believer who is strong in grace is the one who focuses on Jesus and not the things of this world. I have been around a number of good soldiers in my life. I have admired them from afar. The self-discipline and how they have to Obey instruction before complaints. What the Holy Spirit is telling us here is that with God's grace, we as Christian elect can be good illustration of the good soldier that a Christian can be. Hallelujah. The successful athlete is one that is self-discipline and strive for the price. The price is something he hopes to obtain in future. The successful athlete goes through the grueling training 
program before him because he wants to win the trophy or medal that is available. This shows us that the life of grace is lived of a future reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Also, we as Christians are being asked, what are you going to show the Lord God Almighty as a mark of your service to him? The day is coming and it's not far from now. So beloved, be prepared and strive for a price for being able to show your scar. The productive farmer is the one who plants seeds and sees a harvest. He shares in that harvest. Paul was being promoted by the Holy Spirit to tell us Christians that the hardworking farmer enjoys the fruit of his labors in his life. As he plants in, in the lives of others, he sees those results. Beloved, for we as believers, this world will be the impact that we can have in the lives of others as we save them by using our gifts. In other words, being strong in grace has benefits here and now. Beloved, what type of Christian are you willing to be? Are you willing to be like the soldier or the farmer or the athlete? The choice is yours. All Christians need to have our traveling shoes on and keep traveling in God's grace and let our light shine so that others will see and run to God for their salvation. Because beloved, you do, you do not light a light and put it under a bushel. So you have to use your God-given gifts. You have to evangelize. If you are a teacher, you have to teach. If you are a giver, you have to give. That is what the Lord God Almighty wants us as believers to do. Beloved, stand firm. Never mind what other people may be thinking or saying or doing to you. Never mind how weak and shy you yourself feel. The Holy Spirit is calling you to be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. In conclusion, I have been around a number of good soldiers in my life. Yes, I have, I have. And I have admired them from afar. I have admired everything that soldiers do. The fact that when you are giving instructions, you do not have to say anything. You have to be, obey the instruction before you complain. And Paul is saying that with God's help, we can be great illustration of what a Christian can be. So we have to walk in the shadow of the farmer, the athlete, and the soldier. If we want to be good soldiers for Christ, because there is a reward for everything that we do for God, and God will reward us. If it's not on this earth, he will reward us in heaven. So let us be aware and follow the instructions of these three categories of people. Amen. Let us pray.
Father God, we thank you for your word that does not come to you void, but accomplishes its purpose. Father God, help us to keep this word in our hearts and for, for the word to melt our iron hearts and let our heart be receptive to whatever you have told us tonight. Give us the courage, Father God, to evangelize to others who are hurting so that they will also run to you for their deliverance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.